Hello brothers and sisters, this is the last installment of the Song of Solomon series, um, The Great Dance. In Songs chapter 8, here comes the manifested Son of God, her husband Adam has finally come. Songs 8.1 O thou that were as my brother that sucked the breast of my mother, when I should find thee without, I would kiss thee, ye I should not be despised. Now she enters a physical manifestation. Oh, sorry. Hang on. What have I just done? And now enters a physical man manifestation of Christ in her Adam man husband. She calls him again from her new transfigured state. She calls him home to her. She calls him brother in Christ and acknowledges that he too sucked the breast of woman wisdom in the heavenlies, the Holy Spirit, and was fully received by and she was fully received by him. He is now fully born again in the likeness of Christ and has been filled and transfigured. He and her were born trans were born hang on, wait, what are, he and her were transfigured before their reunion. I meant to say he and her were born again and transfigured uh, before their reunion. However, they were transfigured in a separation. And so there is a greater blessing to be bestowed upon them after they echo their oneness in the spirit in the flesh with a physical consummation. So she once again calls him toward her. Now notice she says, I will not be despised. She knows this time he will not reject her. There is no rejection in this. There's no, it can't, you cannot reject each other at this point. Okay, so she knows she's not going to be despised by him. Songs 8-2. I would lead thee and bring thee into my mother's house who would instruct me. And I will cause thee to drink of the spiced wine and the juice of my pomegranate. So she straight away starts proclaiming to him in prayer, I will show you the way to me. Um, I'll show you the way to me. The Lord kept me until you arrived in my mother's house. The, the, house, of, the house of the woman wisdom, the Holy Spirit, is her house. For now her and the heavenly Zion, the Lord's habitation, have become one, for she is now inhabited by Christ. And Christ is indwelling in her. So she is the holy habitation now, right? Christ has come and fully dwelt in her. So she says, I will now release my wine and my sap and lead you to me, Christ's holy habitation on earth as it is in heaven. Christ is in me and now I can bring you to me into my mother's house and she, who will instruct me. So heavenly wisdom is instructing her of how to bring him to her. And Christ is also releasing the spiced wine from her and the juice of her pomegranate, right? So, like I said, she's releasing, rele uh, releasing her spiritual pheromone. She's releasing her spiritual waters, her sap, her spiritual oil. You know, these are all spiritual yet significant and do have a physical manifestation of their own. But that's that's not really important right now. Songs 8.3 His left hand should be under my hand and his right hand should embrace me. She understands that although Christ is head of her and head of her Adam, when her Adam arrives, he will be her head. His left hand will be under her head. And remember up earlier in the poem, I talked about the Lord, what the, uh, the woman had reins and a bit and a bridle, but the man had the arms and the hands. So now we have his hands again. This is what his hands are going to do. One is going to be under her head. So one is going to lead her by the, by the, by the mind. Um, leading her head and then his other hand embraces her because he right it's it's around her heart it's embracing her heart okay the right hand embraces her heart she has the right hand of God loving her and the left hand leading okay songs 8 4 I charge thee O ye daughters of Jerusalem that ye not stir up nor awake my love until he please now this is the third time she said this but she said it three times with a little difference here and there. Now she's making a proclamation and prayer that all women of Jerusalem, the women of the world, are moved out of the way. She's parting a Red Sea, so to speak, of women so that he can focus only on her while she sends out a scent that overpowers them all. Songs 8.5 Who is this that cometh from the wilderness, leaning upon her beloved? I raise thee up under the apple tree, there my mother brought thee forth. And there she raised thee forth that bare thee. 
successy la at last he he comes but she's actually with him right I wrote here, but it's she. she's leaning on her beloved. Okay, she's leaning on be her beloved. She's leaning on Christ, and he's leaning on Christ. They're both leaning in Christ. They're both wanting Christ, right? She's recognized him straight away, and now she's walking with him. And as she echoes the Lord's promise of him, this Adam being raised up in the apple tree of fallen DNA, she recognizes him, she's recognized him and seen him, and immediately he's been restored to flesh and, cor and corruptible. But in this scene, they're walking together together, from the wilderness they're walking out of Egypt you know pretty much and she's leaning on her husband and it's the other daughters who are looking at them and saying what she had said to him in private already they're now looking at him straight away and going um, this is the one that God has raised up under the apple tree that she told us about and they all recognize him and see immediately that he'd been restored to flesh incorruptible I've written it in the wrong tense on the screen so just ignore that I was meant to write what she saw in him and then what the women were saying, but I, I'm got, I must have got lost somewhere along the way. So, Songs 8, 6. Set me as a seal upon thine heart and a seal upon thine arm, for thy love is strong as death and jealousy is cruel as the grave. The coals thereof are coals of fire, which have the most vehement flame. Her perfect love is manifested. And she says, set me as a seal, a signature. You look it up. Mark my heart with your signature scent and your signature love because nothing in the world could possibly match it. Mark my heart and cement our love in the flesh as it is in the spirit. They haven't yet consummated you. She then reveals the strength and magnitude of his love and how painful it was to have lived without it in a fallen world. They overcame death through perfect love, perfect love in Christ. They both endured and overcame the fiery trial to be re reconnected and made one in the flesh as they are already in heaven. Praise the Lord. Songs. 8, 7. Many waters cannot quench love, neither can the floods drown it. If a man would give all the substance of his house for love, it would utterly be content. The many waters refers to the fact that each woman is a waters, and the many women who stood between them could not quench the truth of their love. Doesn't mean women like actually standing between them. It could. It just means all the waters of the world, you know, like to to each atom, all the waters of the world are like shallow water, right? And in shallow water, you don't get very big fish. You get small little fish. But when you go and you go into the deep water, you can pull out deep sea fish, you know, like they're the most expensive fish to buy. So for each atom, you have a deep sea fish, but you have to pour part the waters of all this shallow fish so that you can go into that deep ocean and pluck, pull out, fish out your and net out your deep sea fish because there's only one for you okay the floods couldn't drown it this is an arrow back to the flood of Noah and the placing of eight hello how many eight onto the ark Noah his wife three sons and three daughters the same eight figuratively that are this Adam and Eve the three queens the midwives and their Adams there's nothing new under the sun the end is the beginning the beginning is the end so I, I, we have a little sister and she hath no breasts. Oh, I just want to also say about the eight, there's also eight chapters in the Song of Solomon. 8H. We have a little sister, she hath no breasts. What should we do for our little sister in the day when she shall be spoken for? We have an immature sister who is not giving off a choice vine yet. She's an immature believer. What do we do about it when she's of age to marry but is not, ready to, but is not yet ready in the spirit? So in Songs 8, 9, if she be a wall, we will build upon her a palace of silver, and if she be a door, we will enclose her with boards of cedar. If she be a wall, a locked heart to Christ, we will build her a palace of silver. We will reserve her for safekeeping. If she be a door, a believer that Christ is knocking upon the heart of already, then we will protect her and surround her by the pillars of cedar. Okay, the cedar, the sons of God. Under the protection of the now manifest sons of God in Christ, they're going to they, they, they will protect the women who are not ready yet. In other words, they will prevent the process of super imposition, super imposition occurring to the virgins in waiting, and make sure the self-willed um, fallen cannot imprint their minds to cause these women confusion. So, women, woman wisdom has it within her heart, and so does her husband that they want. There's the will that the process for um, the others that are come that you know the virgins in waiting that are without number that they aren't going to have to go through it quite so traumatically. Okay, 
it's like Christ paved the way for our sins to be forgiven and now the woman wisdom and the man having completed this process now with the power and, and of Christ and Christ in them the hope of glory they're going to make the process easier for each couple that comes after them okay now I can't explain how that happens I just it's just what it's just what's going to happen and then well, wisdom says back to her husband, I am a wall, my breast like towers. Then was I in the eyes as one that found favor. Well, wisdom responds, I am a wall. I was just as they were once. And now look at me. My breasts have grown abundant with the fruit of the vine. And even when I was in their state, I found favor. Okay, so even when I was a wall and I was locked up, she's saying, she's saying, when I was all locked up and whatever, God still found favor in me and he helped me come through. So she's saying she's not going to judge the fact that they're not ready. She's not going to, you know, there's no problem with that. She's saying there's still hope for them yet and we're going to do this. We're going to find a way of making it easier for them and we're going to protect. And she's saying, yes, we're going to protect these women. Now, Songs 8, 11. Solomon had a vineyard at Balhaman. He let out the vineyard unto keepers, and every one for the fruit thereof was to bring a thousand pieces of silver. Solomon had a vineyard and possessed a multitude of women. Balhaman means a possessor of a multitude. He let out the vineyard unto keepers. I have covered this before in video. Solomon fell far from grace and favor, and he stored up wives and concubines in the full knowledge, because he had wisdom, he had full knowledge of the power that they were that they held they were blah, 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 that they held the waters. He controlled the fallen ones by way of these women. He let out the vineyard unto the keepers. He sold these women to the fallen angels like a pimp for the riches of gold. Talents worth six six six. Look it up. He sold his soul and pimped, pimped out the daughters of Zion. And for the people who don't who don't believe that and think that's completely blasphemous. It is not, I am not kidding, it is the absolute truth. Solomon prayed for wisdom and he received it and then he went against it and he betrayed wisdom and he bound wisdom because wisdom revealed that she was hidden within 144,000 female vessels at that time. And so he gathered as many as he could to control it and to have power. Just like the you know the celebrities and the and the the you know the rich conglomerates of this world they're doing stuff they're selling their souls and they're doing stuff to gain power and control and favor for the fallen and the fallen rewards them with riches okay that's solomon was was one of the first biblically that we can see that was doing that and he did it outrageously under the banner of being the king god chose so um Songs 8.12, my vineyard which is mine is before me, thou art Solomon, must have a thousand and those that keep the fruit thereof two hundred. Woman wisdom is saying my vineyard is mine and the likes of Solomon cannot have them. She's saying they are before me and you soul of man like Solomon with your wicked intent and the likes of the fallen angels will not get in my way. The numbers are not important at this time. She's talking about the, the women that are the water bearers, she, they are in her vineyard and he's not taking them. No one is going to take them away from her. And then in Songs 8.13, Thou that has dwellest in the gardens, the companions hearken to thy voice and cause me to hear it. Oh, she is not taking any nonsense now, this woman wisdom. She's proclaiming to the archons and the fallen ones, the woman that dwells in the gardens, the women that dwell in the gardens of Eden and their companions, their husbands, hearken to thy, her husband's voice and cause her to hear it. She hears their echo back of the sameness of spirit. Songs 8.14 Make haste, my beloved, and be thou like unto a roe or to a young heart upon the mountains of spices. Now we know that this is what the Lord was telling her about himself and about her husband earlier in the poem. Now she's, she's actually echoing that to her husband and says, Go, 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 be like a roe or a young heart. Okay? So she's saying, Go leap. She's saying, Christ in Adam made flesh, make haste and go leap through the wilderness, the dry and barren lands. <coughs> the lands of the women who aren't pouring forth the living water yet and collect our women and collect our mountains of spices round up our electing Christ and let's get this done now they don't need to collect the men they need to collect the women okay they need to collect the women not actually pick them up and take them but just go and activate 
the heavenly waters and the heavenly spirit waters flowing through the, the waters of life flowing through the females and in doing that the atom automatically wakes up at uh, once her once her process is complete so he's going and he's going and leaping and all of these um, and he'll leap through and all of the women are going to look at him and they're going to go ah because they're going to see Christ in him and they're just going to automatically be changed on the way <coughs> but she doesn't go because she's reserved she's hidden for 1260 days she's not leave she's not she's not leaving you there okay anyway that's enough for today and that that concludes my study on the songs of solomon there are deeper levels of 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 revelation that are in there but this is already so far out of people's comfort zone the lord had insisted that i keep it i keep it at this level and not go too deep with you so that's why some sections are not are not really expanded because you guys um this is not to insult anybody but most people are really just not ready um i love you brothers and sisters and i will see you next time i see you